professional entrepreneur? And the answer is, yeah, I kind of would. First, it's a uh, state trip to a lot more interesting places. But second, secondly, a lot of what's going on in Silicon Valley these days out fixing things. There's a little communist going on. There's a, little, uh, there are a lot of uh, entrepreneurs who come there, and um, and frankly, it's, uh, the environment internationally is a lot more welcome. People are looking for things um, and, uh, and willing to seize the resources a little bit more aggressively than, than to some extent within, within the Valley itself. So I found the uh, international community much more in one sense stimulated to work with. So I'm doing that on behalf of SRI. They, I'm supposed to be a physical manifestation of Silicon Valley to you. That may disappoint many of you, but <laughs> That's the way it is. <laughs> At least the way it was a couple of years ago. Um, now, SRI was retained by Corpo because SRI actually, uh, how many of you have ever heard of SRI? Okay, so, SRI was actually called, uh, originally called, founded in 1946, it was called Stanford Research Institute. It was actually founded by Stanford University to commercialize the intellectual property research um, out of the university. Uh, it was recognized even way back when that you, the university professors do research, but they don't commercialize so great. A lot of universities did this. Um, MIT has the uh, Draper Institute, uh, Duke and UNC, as it's called Research Triangle Institute. There's a bunch of these things that, that popped up at that time. Basically to do applied research, to try to scale up. During the Vietnam War, uh, a lot of the research efforts at all the universities was funded by the U.S. government in general. Department of Defense in particular, during the Vietnam War, this was not a popular activity on campus. So all universities in the United States spun out their commercialization arm in the 70s uh, into the independent nonprofit, the 501c uh, nonprofit institutions um, that do applied research. They're quite big. Uh, those of you from Silicon Valley, um, SRI has 65 acres in the heart of Silicon Valley. You don't need to know it's there. That land is worth almost a billion dollars. Um, they have 2,100, 2,500 uh, researchers, PhDs, masters, uh, engineers doing research um, and did last year $500 million from business. And they do research in uh, five basic areas nanotechnology, uh, uh, material science. Engineer, big engineering systems, um, uh, uh, biosciences, information technology, and they have also had a uh, policy group. Give you some sense of the kind of work they've done historically. The first um, packet on ARPANET traveled from SRI to UCLA. So SRI did develop uh, the internet, and for many years, the first 10 or 15 years, actually managed the .com, .org, .gov directory. Um, but you didn't know that. Uh, I can even show you the bar that, that they had the first beer after they said that. Um, for those of you in the area, it's Bach. So when you go to Bach, that's where they celebrate it. Um, the mouse, a lot of people think Steve Jobs, you're a part of the mouse. Actually, the mouse was developed at, uh, at um, SRI, and then they licensed it to Xerox Park uh, for commercialization. At that point, they weren't doing a lot of commercialization. Um, malaria drugs. A lot of malaria drugs came out of SRI. See the sense of things are working on today. A lot of cybersecurity stuff going on. A lot of artificial intelligence work going on. Voice recognition activity. Uh, cancer drugs, biomarkers. Uh, one of the things I think is pretty cool. Uh, you know, if you stop all carbon, uh, if you stop all carbon emissions today, there's still too much carbon in the air. As long as you believe in global warming, there's still too much carbon in the air. And so. There is a movement underway that you have to develop carbon scrubbers. You actually pull carbon out of the air, even if all carbon be, uh, is done and then sequesters in the ground. So SRI just completed the first commercial scale carbon scrubber in the world. So you try to, and the theory is that you build big farms and stuff, and as the wind blows through, it takes the carbon out of the air. All right, that's the vision that, that uh, is going on. Uh, SRI also just completed the U.S. Department of Education policy for the use of technology in K-12 education. So that's an example of the type of things that SRI worked on. You didn't know that. Right? 
So to be fair, I didn't know that. I've lived in, there for 20 years and I just uh, didn't discover that. And part of the reason is, why that's right, it's very uh, quiet. And so it's, it's like the university in that they've got different groups in there. These scientists, frankly, don't uh, reach out just like any university professor does reach out. Um, and so what SRI has also done as part of its business model is even though the Silicon Valley ecosystem is all around them, they don't want to wait for chance to merge these two. Now, sometimes chance does occur to, to merge two, the two together. And so they developed an internal group that sort of does what I would refer to as the old-fashioned way of venture capital. They actually write the business plans. Today, venture capitalists read business plans. But in the old days in Silicon Valley, they actually wrote business plans. They were business people, started up, happened to find money, and then wrote business plans and developed companies out of that. And then hired the right CEO to come in and take over the business plan. So there is an organization and a process that's been put in place to work with the scientists to figure out what the markets are, who the competitors are, what the needs are, what the business model is, put it all together, go out and recruit a world-class uh, CEO, and then give them the deal, let them commercialize it, they take it to Sand Hill Road. So they might come to me and say, Amos, we got an idea, they show it to me, and I would take it to my venture capital friends, or they could introduce me to the venture capital friends, and he gets introduced, and it goes, goes to market. Uh, those of you who are familiar with Nuance, that was an SRI spin out in the last week. You talk, make a reservation on an airline and you deal with voice recognition, it's probably a nuance system. Intuitive Surgical is a minimally invasive uh, medical device uh, company. It's got a market cap of about $10 billion. That's spun out. Uh, they just did a company called Siri. Um, and Siri is an iPhone app that just got acquired by Apple and they're embedding it in. I believe it's going to roll out in iPhone 5. You may not make it because the schedule is on that part of it. But the theory is that um, it's the next generation of user interface with computers, which is to say it's got to be both um, voice, so it's going to be voice if it's, if it's a smartphone, and the smartphone is the platform, it's a phone, hello. And it's really hard to kind of do this with uh, And then secondly, it's rather than sort of type and search, type and search, type and search, it's actually using artificial intelligence to try to figure out what you want to go do. And then you sort of, I kind of call it like a bot like function to figure out the answer. So you would, instead of go, you would say, I need a, you know, I need an Italian restaurant reservation at 4 o'clock. And it goes and figures out everything. You know, it would go. If the comp, it would mash together open table and a search and reservation and do it all. So it starts to all that search numbers. So it will theoretically show up soon. Um, so because of that background, and then what SRI does is they take equity in it, and when there's a liquidity event, they get some they get some money and go back into the nonprofit. So because SRI does this and has people like university research professors, um, uh, Corpo, Chilean government, uh, retained SRI to go to this program. Nonetheless, you are all invited. Now the program really can, well, we want to help. Okay. So what we want to help on are things which typically have higher IT content. Because with all due respect, the SRI guys, I mean, if you're doing something that's a data site, the SRI guys don't really want <laughs> but um, one of the things, by the way, any person on Earth is free to come in and try to license IT from um, SRI. Um, if you are introduced, you have a much higher likelihood of getting it or getting it at a price that's good. Uh, and the standard, by the way. And one of the things that I think uh, I can talk about later is a lot of the deals being done on, in Ontario work these days require high, higher IT content. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And so finding sources of it, you can invent it, but a lot of the more complex things that you don't get it from different groups. You get it from uh, Catholic University, and you might get some from Stanford, you might get some from SRI, you match it together, and then like, boom, you've got a portfolio to go do something. So we'll probably tend to focus on IT heavy, uh, heavier deals. Um, we'll uh, take, uh, the corporal will work through the application process and try to 
not a heavy duty application like this. It's all online, it's submitted. We're not looking for you to submit <coughs> 42 page business plan. Five pages, three, four, five pages. Search that. Basically, what market is going after, how big, what are you trying to do to it, why do people like it, that sort of thing, where are you, that sort of thing. Um, any, we, the answers will be in context. So if you're a very early stage deal and you say, I'm going after XYZ market, I think it's really big, but I don't know, that's fine. If you've been shipping product for four years and you're saying, I'm going after XYZ market and I have no idea how big it is, that's the problem. I think we will probably be, we would expect you to know more the further along you are. So you are not at a disadvantage if you haven't uh, developed a product or, or anything like that. It, it will be contextual um, within that. The corporal people will review them and reduce the, the relevant group down to about 30. And SRI is coming back to Santiago and meet with the 30 to kind of go a little, a little bit greater. And then we'll take a final 10. Again, you're not a winner or a loser. You are a winner simply for showing up. It's just which can you think we can do the most good for here in the short term. Uh, of those 10, we will actually take you through sort of a, it's a, a, a work, two, three day workshop here in Santiago. And then for a couple of those that we'll have to decide, we'll actually take them back to uh, Santiago. And Corpo has been very gracious to Subsidize or pay for a large percentage for all of this. I'm not sure. You may feel free to ask any of the uh, corporal people here and lobby for as much as you can get. Let me stop there for a second. Have any, any questions about this program? Did you say that? It, uh, there is no specific number <coughs> of going back to uh, Silicon Valley. It might be not if we say that nobody. Uh, is there, because literally there, I don't think that the corporal people will feel good about that. Um, it could be, I mean, I think contractually we set up at five, and if you all are dazzling, then you and we can lobby corporal for four. It's not written as, you know, you might want to say something else. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's to be determined. Um, and again, I think largely this is trying to focus on um, we want to help. We want to help. And I think the way to kind of think about this is this is an easy way to test yourself. Because we will apply, uh, we'll apply Silicon Valley standards and we'll say this is what the St. Hill Road BC is going to ask you. And if you don't have an answer for it, you're not getting it. And, or your presentation doesn't cut it. And we'll help you then say, Here's why. And here's, there is a formula. There's absolutely a formula for what every VC expects to do. <coughs> it's all like the same. They're like that. And if you don't meet the formula, you just make it that much harder. To do. It's not magic, but we'll tell you. So it's an easy way to practice the problem, to test it out, and to fail, you know, substantially, and then learn from that. And, well, theoretically, a startup Chile people should have a much, I haven't seen the application form, but you guys should be way ahead because you guys have submitted an application form. So, <laughs> and I would assume it's not a huge similar. <laughs> Or one with all of you guys. Yeah. Other than um, it would have a lot of, you know, IT 